Hi, I'm Sam and I'm an Osprey ambassador for Rutland Ospreys. Today I'm interviewing Mike Dilger, who's a naturalist and BBC presenter. So Mike, what have you been doing since I saw you last bird fair? I can barely remember, Sam. I, I kind of, one minute I'm doing bumblebees, the next minute I'm doing basking sharks. I kind of run around doing all manner of things. But one thing that particularly sticks in my mind, because most of the time I work on a program called The One Show. It's a program that goes on BBC 7 till 7.30 each weekday. And um, it's a magazine show. It has a really well-known presenter called Matt Baker and Alex Jones. And um, they sit on the sofa and they have little wildlife films, which I make. So I've been doing lots of wildlife films for them. But very excitingly, I got a chance to travel abroad with BBC World News. So BBC World News goes out right across the world. It's a, cha a cable channel for the English-speaking world. And something like 60 million people get to watch these programmes. And I did two half hours on the wildlife of the Philippines. So I travelled to this remote kind of set of islands, 7,100 islands, a remote archipelago uh, above Borneo, kind of east of Vietnam in Asia, and got a chance to kind of travel around some of these amazing islands and see some of the wildlife. And we saw wonderful birds, lots of endemic birds, which are birds that are confined to the Philippines and seen nowhere else in the world because the Philippines have been isolated, been separated from the rest of Asia for millions upon millions of years. So they've evolved lots of individual species you can find only there. But it's an exciting place to visit the Philippines, but it's also a, a threatened place because a big population in the Philippines, it's quite a poor country. Um, so a lot of their resources, a lot of their forest, a lot of their mangroves are being chopped down quite quickly. So they're losing a lot of their very rare species. But I got to film the rarest crocodile in the world, the Philippine crocodile. So we're doing this amazing project called Head Starting, whereby they dig up the eggs to the Philippine crocodile, they rear them in captivity, because when the crocodiles hatch, they're this size, and they get eaten by lots of different creatures because it's such a rare animal, they rear the crocodile, the young hatchlings, wait till they get to two foot, about that long, and then release them into the wild. And I got to handle the rarest crocodile in the world. I was holding this crocodile, and they're taking some photographs of me holding this crocodile, and there's a bit of weed right across this crocodile's snout. And the photographer tried to take the weed off the snout, and I got a good handle on the crocodile, and the crocodile went, ow! and bit him, and the cameraman had loads of blood all over his hands. But it was an amazing experience. So I filmed that last year, and it went out in spring and summer of this year. So I've been to the Philippines, been doing lots of one shows, and generally kind of trying to keep out of mischief, really. And that crocodile proves cute but deadly. Cute but deadly, exactly. Bird is 30 years old. Over the years you've been coming, what is your favorite memory? Crikey, my favourite memory. You've got me there. I think each year I tend to kind of like develop new memories from the year before. I think I've done about 20 bird fairs. So compared to some people who've virtually done all 30, then I'm a relative newbie. Um, I tend to remember the projects I remember, for example, when early on when they supported the the uh, Cock of the Rock pro area around Mindo. I remember each year when they kind of raised money for different projects, so that was an area that I know really well, Ecuador, so I remember that. I remember, I, I have one very fond memory. They used to do a, um, a celebrity wild brain of Britain. So I was up against uh, me, Nick Baker, Chris Packham, and David Lindo. So all four of us were answering wildlife questions and the specialised subjects, and I did Butterflies of Britain. Um, and I beat uh, Nick Baker by two points and Chris Packham by a point. Chris Packham was absolutely gutted <laughs> that I beat him by a point. It's the kind of highlight of my career, beating Nick and Chris. So we were all, I know, I take respect from them, they're all brilliant naturalists, um, but beating Chris and, and Chris by one point and Nick by two points will stay with me forever. I'm pretty sure you haven't let them hear the last of it. <laughs> we know you from amongst other things in the one show. What, where do you, where you visit lots of places in the UK? What is the favourite place you have visited and favourite animal you have seen? Can I choose two favourite places? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my, uh, I've got, my first favourite place is my back garden. 
because I've got a lovely back garden. It's not huge. It's um, probably about the size of two and a half of these. So it's probably a tennis court and a bit. It's like a pair of, you don't know Levi Bellbottom jeans, but they were trendy back when I was very young. So you end up with jeans narrow at the hip and they kind of go to big flared trousers. So it's like a big pair of flared trousers. So it's narrow at the house and much wider at the bottom. But the jewel of my garden is I have a little stream at the bottom running past. I've, had, I've got Kingfisher that comes to my garden. I've had Otter in my garden. And uh, my British garden list is 85 species of birds. So I love bird watching in my own garden. But if I had to pick my very, very favorite place, oh God. I love going to the Outer Hebrides. So Scotland, West Scotland, you've got the Inner Hebrides, Mull, Skye. You've got an amazing area called the Minch in between, which is where you can see minke whales. Uh, you can see harbour porpoise, bottlenose dolphin, really good for birds. And then you've got the Western Isles or the Outer Hebrides, this chain of islands that runs up Barra, Bembecula, South Uist, North Uist, Harris, Lewis, the Monarchs, the Shants. And on the west coast, you've got this amazing sand dunes called Maka, because basically got, we've got prevailing westerly winds that blow all the sand onto these lovely coral white sand dunes. And when you go there on a nice day, the beaches are, are beautifully white sandy, and the seas are blue, azure, cobalt, aquamarine, every different color of blue. And I reckon on a fine day, they are the best beaches in the world. They beat Bondi Beach, they beat any beaches around the world. They're amazing. So probably my back garden and the Outer Hebrides. Cool. What do you think is the most important issue conserving conservation worldwide that we need to change? Um, I phrase conservation starts in your own backyard is very important. I believe that kind of, we can't go preaching all about kind of people chopping their rainforest down or people kind of wasting plastic. Um, abroad when we're not doing it at home. So I think we have to kind of get on board at the moment that, you know, we have to be more environmentally responsible at home. I think um, I try to buy local food. I've got a local veg box, so I don't buy beans from Malawi uh, or strawberries from, from the continent. Um, you know, in the winter, I eat strawberries when they're in season, which is kind of spring and early summer. I eat kind of, I eat seasonal vegeta vegetables all year round that are grown about a mile from my home. We have a veg pot at home. We try to use local foods. Um, and also as well, I've massively reduced my use of plastic. So I think I'm trying to kind of practice what I preach at home. But I think the single most important thing is, is, is kind of habitat degradation and fragmentation. So, um, you know, burgeoning population around the world, you know, trying to get kind of ourselves more environmentally responsible and then kind of preaching to other people to, to try and do the same. So practice what you preach and do it right at home and then we can tell them to, to get their house in order. Yeah, I would have said plastic because the amount of marine wildlife you see on TV. I yeah, think. Blue Planet 2 with the sperm whale, where the sperm whale calf died was a, was a game changer because television has never had an impact like that. And that's really kind of brought kind of plastics to home. You know, they all, they get, all talk about all these kind of micro, microfibers of plastics. Um, and they, you know, plastics just doesn't break down. And um, pro, you know, some of the kind of plankton are eating the plastics, the fish are eating the, plas the plankton that have got plastics inside. And what are we doing? We're eating the fish, so we're eating our own plastics. So plastics is a really important issue as well. Certainly in marine environments, plastic is the biggest issue at the moment. Yeah. After your fantastic Andy and Cock of the Rock impression last year, we are eager to hear if you have any other bird impressions <laughs> you can do. Would you, what would you like to share with us? Um, I could do a bird called the Toucan Barbit, but you're going to have to do it as well. Oh. Okay. So right, what happens is the toucan barbet, the Andean cock of the rock, is what's called a lecking species. So the males look fantastic in their bright pink plumage and their black and silver wings, and the females are dull and boring. But the toucan barbet, which is another South American bird from the Andes rainforest, they're beautiful. So they've got a black crown, got a silver bill, red throat, orange breast, yellow belly, green wings, blue rump, and a slate grey tail. And the, the male and female do an antiphonal duet. So they stand, stand up. So they stand up, and um, you're gonna have to pretend you're a female, okay? Because you're smaller than me, and I'm the daddy around here. So pretend you're a female, just, just go with me, okay? Mm -hmm. So what happens is, 
I nod to you. We're sitting next to each other on the branch, and as I nod, I go, ah, and then you go, you jump and go, ah. Ah. Can jump higher than that? <laughs> Come on. Uh. Right, so we start off slowly and get faster and faster. Are you ready? No. Start slowly and go end up fast. I don't think much of my mate, do you? <laughs> you did ask me. <laughs> it's your own fault. <laughs> okay. So that's about it for this interview. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>